So far we looked at the models when uh, X and Y were related in a linear relationship, and X was affecting Y just through this uh, coefficient beta associated with the input variable. However, we might uh, have situations when variables X, input variables, interact among each other. Uh, so let, let's look at a very simple example. Let's look. Uh, let's let's think of a marketing campaign. Let's say you mar you run a marketing campaign, and you run it both on Facebook and Google. So you spend some money to advertise your product on Google and Facebook, and what you want, in, you what are interested in, you're interested in the sales. So that's your Y variable, and you want to understand the relationship between the sales and. Um, amount of money you spend on Google advertisement and amount of money you spend on Facebook advertisement okay but what might happen is that there is interaction between Google advertisement and Facebook inter advertisement and, and there are two types of interaction so one type of interaction you can think about is if you advertise product on Google and then the person goes to Facebook and see advertisements of the same product. And it happens quite often just because of the cookies that track your uh, queries, for example, on Google. And so your computer tries to remember what type of things you're interested in. And it's very likely you might be seeing the same type of advertisement on different platforms. So let's say you, you saw advertisement on Google and then you go to Facebook and you see the same advertisement of the same product. Uh, seeing it at twice might actually affect you and you say oh you know i've seen it in google and now i see it again so maybe maybe i should try this product or another way to to think of this interaction is let's say you search for shoes and google give you some ad results at the top of the page and you actually one of those stores that sells shoes was your stores and um uh, the person liked it and the person clicked on it and bought the shoes and then person goes to the Facebook and sees the advertisement on Facebook again but the person already bought the shoes so this advertisement actually does not have any effect. So the fact that advertisement was shown on Google and, uh, means that it, it, in this case uh, had an effect on how a person reacts to advertisement on Facebook. person ignores this Facebook advertisement just because the shoes has been already bought. So. Uh, how do we model this relationship? Um, and the way we're going to model is, is is by doing the following thing. We're going to say, okay, the effect of Google advertisement, okay, so, so again, the G is the dollars spent on Google campaign, on Google ad campaign, and this is uh, dollars spent on Facebook campaign. Okay. And so the coefficient beta 1 tells you how much uh, effect of this money you spend on Google has on your sales. And the way we're going to model this interaction between the two marketing campaigns is the following. We're going to say, okay, the effect of the Google advertisement, in fact, is a linear model of the money you spent on Facebook. So we're going to use, you know, I'm going to use beta 3 plus beta 4 Facebook. So in other words, let's say you don't spend any money on the Facebook and then Google advertisement uh, leads to a lot of the buyers. And on the other uh, end of the spectrum, let's say you spend a lot of the money on Facebook um, and then all of the people know about your product already from your Facebook campaign. So whenever they see it on Google, they actually don't pay attention because, okay, we've seen it before and we don't need to be shown again. Anyhow, so we assume that the effect of uh, Google spent dollars is just a linear function of the amount of money you spend on Facebook. Okay, and so if we put everything together now, <coughs> we have sales and uh, beta zero plus instead of writing beta one now we have beta three plus beta four Facebook dollars uh, times the Google dollars plus beta two. Facebook dollars. Now, if you unfold it, um, if you unfold it, so let me start a new, a new page. Okay, you're basically going to have sales equals beta zero, and now we have this term here: beta three plus beta four Facebook times Google. So it becomes uh, beta three times Google 
plus beta beta 4 times Facebook times Google dollars plus in our original beta 2 times Facebook so now we have this new term in the in the actually so you know it's the same so this part we had before we had before this one and this one so now we have this new part here uh, beta 4 times the um, dollar spent on Facebook times the dollar spent on Google campaign so in other words we use the product we have a product of Facebook and Google dollars and this is called interaction term An interaction term allows us to understand the relationship between uh, dollar spend on Facebook and Google, how they affect each other. So if you, so there are a couple of things. If if B4 not equal to zero, and when whenever I write this, I mean statistically not zero. It means that uh, hypothesis, uh, null hypothesis, that beta four is uh, zero, uh, is rejected. Okay. So whenever this is a case, we say there is in, there is interaction uh, between Facebook and Google dollars or dollars spent on Facebook and Google. So that's one thing. That's what we can say about um, the uh, interaction in general so the interaction exists if beta 4 is not zero interaction exists now let's look at the sign uh, if beta 4 is positive uh, what can we say about this interaction uh, so let, let's go back so beta 4 tells us the relationship between the uh, Facebook dollars and the beta 1 effect of the Google dollars on the sales so if beta 4 is positive, meaning as Facebook dollars go up, beta 1, which is effect of the Google dollars, goes up as well. So in other words, the more you spend on Facebook, the more effective your Google campaign is for the same amount of dollars. So effect, so remember beta 1 is the effect of the Google campaign, so the effect of the Google campaign becomes stronger the more money you spend on Facebook and vice versa if beta 4 is negative meaning that if Facebook dollars go up so if your Facebook campaign budget goes up the effect of the Google campaign goes down so um, and you basically have to ask uh, yourself in this in, in this situation it's it's you know you basically have this amplifying effect right so the Facebook advertisement amplifies the uh, effectiveness of the Google campaign in this situation you have the opposite you have this uh, dampening effect so the more money you spend on Facebook the less effective your Google campaign is so that's how the interaction works and um, the way we model it in R uh, we just uh, so again in the equation you just have this term that's a product of, uh, of two of the predictors and this term will model interaction between the predictor x1 and x2 in R, you're going to use the same LM command, and you can just write x1 times x2 on the right-hand side. And if you do this, then uh, the R will model uh, x1 plus x2 plus the interaction between x1 and x2. So there's one thing to keep in mind. Whenever you include interaction between uh, two variables in R, R will also include the main effects. So those, uh, so beta 1 and beta 2 are called main effects. So that's the effect of the predictors on the y, and uh, this one is called interaction effect. Now again, if you just include the interaction term into the LM function, the main effect is going to be included as well. And uh, if you use the semicolon, then only interaction between x1 and x2 will be included in the model, the main effects will not. Okay, and again, the coefficients beta 1 and beta called marginal effects, and if beta 3 is significant, then we say there is interaction between the uh, two of the variables, and uh, we always leave beta 1 and beta 2 in the model, whether they are significant or not. So, uh, meaning that uh, if uh, beta 3 is significant, then uh, you keep, 
you keep uh, beta 1 and beta 2 regardless of their significance. regardless of whatever what p-values you have for the beta 1 and beta 2. So you always keep the main effects whenever interaction is significant. Okay, so let's look at an example. We're going to look at the uh, orange juice sales and uh, marketing campaigns. And uh, similar to the new food example, we'll try to understand the relationship between the uh, price, uh, sales, and uh, features of the marketing campaign. Um, but in this case, uh, we're actually going to have a little bit more complicated data set, and this data set will require modeling some interactions. So let's look at the relationship. Um, so we have the uh, price, which is uh, one of the x variables here, and uh, move uh, here means uh, number of the units moved, so essentially sales. So, uh, so how many units were sold. And if you look at this relationship, it's actually very similar to the relationship we see in the new foot example, is that for the smaller values of the price, you have the variance is large here, right? And for this uh, larger values of the price, uh, you have a smaller variance here. So it looks like the variance actually changes depending on the value of x. And you remember one of the assumptions of linear model is that uh, we should have a constant variance throughout for all the values of x. So what we're going to do, we're going to try to put uh, the uh, sales on the logarithmic scale. And let's look at the relationship between price and sales on the logarithmic scale. So and actually, if you try to imagine the uh, curve or the line that uh, goes through this cloud, it's going to be some nonlinear looking um, uh, nonlinear looking line. So it looks like we actually solved the problem with the variances. The variances here is maybe slightly lower, but you know, similar to the variances here. So the problem of variances was solved, but now the relationship become nonlinear. So we're gonna, uh, actually that's what I did here. I just uh, I fitted the line. So instead of drawing it as I did on the previous slide, I fitted the line and you see that the best line that described the relationship is not a straight line. All right, so let's look at uh, the relationship on the log-log scale. Once we put the price in the, in the sales on the logarithmic scale, um, it looks like the line does give us a good description of the relationship and also looks like the variances are somewhat similar, uh, although they're a little bit higher on the left than they're on the right. But the, the difference is not as um, pronounced as it was in the original linear scale. And you see three different colors here, and uh, colors basically mean three different brands. I have uh, uh, my green brand is um, for the in-store brand, and the uh, red brand is a Minute Maid orange juice, and the orange uh, brand is Tropicana. So we have, uh, this is store brand, uh, this is Minute Maid, and this is Tropicana. So Tropicana is the most expensive one, the Minute Meat is in between, and the store brands are, are the cheapest ones out of all three. Okay, so now we're interested in how advertisement uh, affects the price sensitivity. So we learned from our exploratory analysis from our scatter plots that we should put uh, both sales and price on the logarithmic scale. So we're going to do that. And then uh, we also put this uh, feature, uh, FEAT, so that's basically the uh, level of advertisement uh, of. And it's, uh, it's short for word featured, meaning that whether the uh, product was featured in the store through the newspaper or through the posters that you see in the store. So whether it, there was some advertisement for the product or not. Uh, so we're interested in that, and um, uh, we're also interested in effect um, uh, of, so if, if basically if we feature the brand or not, so it's uh, in-store in, in, in display promo or fly advertisement, and uh, we're interested in whether the advertisement affect uh, the price sensitivity. So in other words, we want to uh, see whether uh, this relationship holds, whether the uh, how people react uh, to the price changes 
is actually related to the advertisement campaign. And you remember our example of electronic arts, when electronic arts did the advertisement and uh, offered the discount, people actually were less willing to uh, buy the uh, product. Uh, while they were more willing to buy the product if they didn't get a discount. So it looks like uh, this, um, and that was actually interaction between discount and the advertisement, right? And um, it had a very strange and unintuitive effect. So we tried to, to check for similar relationship here. And so once we put this into the final model, we have uh, our beta zero, we intercept, then beta three below beta four, that replaces the original uh, price sensitivity. Um, and uh, again, the uh, advertisement level in, in the model, and we expand everything, so we have our uh, beta 3 times the log, so that's become the new um, uh, elasticity, right? So the new sensitivity uh, to the price, and that becomes interaction uh, between the advertisement and the price. And this is the main effect, uh, main effect uh, of advertisement uh, present in the store. Okay, so let's, all right, so let's look at the estimates of the coefficients. Uh, again, in R, we just have to uh, say, uh, if we want to model interactions, we have to use this star uh, multiplication uh, operator. And you remember, R will include uh, both the interaction term and the main effects into the, into the model. And uh, so here is the here is the estimates. Uh, we have our beta zero, um, our intercept, and then we have the uh, sensitivity to the price, which is negative, which is intuitive. If price goes up, the sales will go down. In this specific case, if price goes up by one percent, sales will go down by uh, negative. Uh, sales will go down by zero point nine percent. The uh, advertisement. Uh, beta is positive. Again, something intuitively makes sense. If uh, you advertise the product, uh, your sales will go up. And the interaction between the sales and uh, price sensitivity is negative. So, and it's, and, and this is, uh, so let, let, let's think what this means. Um, um, so, so our you remember the relationship between the, uh, so this uh, beta four is basically tells us how the uh, advertisement affects the price sensitivity. So this, this variable, so this beta tells us uh, how advertisement affects uh, price sensitivity. And in this case, the number is negative, uh, meaning that as advertisement goes up, okay, the price sensitivity uh, goes uh, down. And in, in this case, it actually goes down uh, by quite a lot, by almost another percent, meaning that um, if you advertise the product, then increase in sales will have a huger negative impact on the sales. So let's let's think about this. So actually, that's the you know it's written right here that uh, advertisement increases the price sensitivity. It goes from 0.96 from this value uh, to 0.96 uh, minus 0.98, which is minus 1.94, and again that comes from. Uh, from this formula. So that's your beta 3 is your main effect. And then you have beta 4, which is the effect of the advertisement on the price sensitivity. And you remember the uh, feature it is a 0, 1 variable. So 0, 1. So when price, when product is advertised, when this uh, feature variable equals to 1, then you basically your beta 1 becomes uh, beta 3 plus uh, beta 4, right? So when feature equals to 1, so when product is advertised in the store, then that's how you calculate the price sensitivity by just adding up those two numbers. So we add up uh, this negative uh, 0 0.95 and this one negative 0 0.97 and we get this negative 0 0.94 
negative 1.94. So which means that if you take the product that you advertised and you increase the price by 1%, your sales will go down by 2%. This is counterintuitive, right? So why why advertisement actually has this negative effect on the on the price sensitivity? People become more price sensitive um, to the products that get advertised. Well, I'm not I'm not a, I'm not a marketing uh, campaign, but uh, my my, uh, uh, my 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 silly explanation is is the following. Uh, when you advertise a product, you usually try to reach the uh, group of people that were not your customers before. So if you advertise Tropicana orange juice, you usually try to attract the customers that either never bought uh, oranges before or they never bought Tropicana bread before. And uh, what happens by uh, bringing this new group of customers, um, these customers uh, co become very this group of customers is more sensitive to the price because first of all okay i've never tried orange juice and you know why would they pay too much money for it i've never tried tropicana so your your old group of customers your loyal customers which always buy orange juice always buy the same brand uh they actually if you increase the price a little bit they will keep buying your brand they will they be, keep being loyal to the brand but this new group of customers they're more volatile they're more sensitive to the price so they're that's that's my explanation of why this happens. Okay, and um, okay. So let's let's look at how does advertisement affect the price sensitivity. And um, uh, one of the reasons is that the price was uh, lowered uh, during the advertisement campaign. So that's that's another uh, reason why advertisement uh, campaign changed the price sensitivity. If you look at the price, uh, uh, the original price, which is the red box here. And the green uh, price, which is uh, priced during the advertisement campaign. So you see that for all three brands, for Dominic's, uh, Dominic's is the brand store. So that was data from the Dominic's store, which is a big uh, grocery store chain in Chicago. It doesn't exist anymore. Um, so actually for all three brands, uh, you see the advertisement price actually went down. So what happens when you advertise a product, it usually comes with some type of price uh, incentive, price incentive. Uh, you, you, you get this uh, $1 off coupon and uh, the, the thing becomes cheaper. So, and again, once, uh, once the price goes down, then the one, so then, then, then people become more, uh, more sensitive to the, uh, to, the changes, to the changes in the price. Okay, one more concept, dummy variables. Um, so when we try to uh, model effect of the brand uh, on the uh, on the price, on the sales. Uh, so the brand variable, you remember brand is the variable that takes three different values. It's uh, Dominic's, Minute Mate, or Tropicana. We have three different brands. Now, uh, well, what you can do, you know, you, you cannot use uh, Dominic's, Minute Mate, and Tropicana in the model, so you have to convert it into numbers, and you can say, okay, I, you know, I'm going to convert it to zero, uh, one, and uh, three, okay? And uh, then the coefficient associated with this brand in this model is beta two, will basically tell us uh, effect of change from Dominix to Minute Mate, and it also assumes that change from Minute Mate to Tropicana is the same as change from Dominic to Minute Mate. So basically this, uh, this change from Dominic to Minute Mate from Minute Mate to Tropicana, it's a one unit of change in the brand. Which actually, even when, when I say that, it's it's it sounds very strange. It's it doesn't doesn't make doesn't uh, it's 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 kind of um, and once the price goes down again, you attract this uh, new group of customers uh, who would not buy your brand before, but maybe at a lower price and with advertisement they start buying it. And again, this group of people is uh, probably most price sensitive the, compared to your previous group of loyal customers. Let's look at one more concept, uh, concept of dummies. Now we want to understand the effect of brand on the sales. Uh, that's uh, like every, every marketing person would be interested in something like that. So you remember we have three type of brands. Uh, 
we have uh, Dominic's brand, which is a store brand. Uh, we have Minute Maid, and uh, we have Tropicana. Okay. And if we want to understand the effect of, of uh, each of those brands on the on the sales, uh, we have to put this into regression model. Uh, but you know we cannot put words Dominic's and and Minute Maid. We have to convert this into numbers. So one straightforward and. Uh, uh, probably something that on, on top of, of, of our heads, you know, approach will be to assign 0, 1, and 2 values uh, to those brands and then put those numbers into the model. But uh, th this actually does make much sense because um, if you think about this, this beta 2, uh, which is the effect of the brand on, on the sales, uh, it, it will basically, mo it, it will tell you if you change brand by one unit, uh, that's how your sales will change, and and then change from Dominic's to Minute Maid in, is is one unit, and change from Minute Maid to Tropicana is another unit. But then if you change the order of your brand, then your units become different. And so, actually, even if when I say it out loud, it it seems like a nonsense. It's uh, th that doesn't make much sense to do that. So instead instead of doing that, assigning zero one two numbers, we're gonna uh, introduce what is called dummy variables. So a dummy variable is, is a variable associated with each of the brands. So we have uh, Dominic dummy variables, uh, Minute Maid dummy variable, and the uh, Tropicana dummy variable. And we basically uh, gonna do what the machine learners call um, uh, one hot encoding. Um, so if you think about this, um, we have three different brands and um, well, R do it slightly different. I'm gonna introduce you more, um, more uh, common sense version of it. So you have those three brands: uh, Dominic, Dominic's, uh, Minute Maid, and uh, Tropicana. And then uh, you're gonna introduce three dummy variables. And the first variable is equal uh, one uh, if uh, your brand is Dominic and zero otherwise. And then your second dummy variable, if you probably already figured it out, it's one if your brand is uh, Minute Maid and zero otherwise. And the third variable equals to one if your brand is Tropicana and zero otherwise, right? So, and you basically, if you, you essentially you add three new variables to your model. Instead of having one variable brand, you will have three new variables. So if your brand is uh, uh, Dominic's, then the Dominic's value is gonna be one and minute minute and Tropicana are gonna be zeros. For the minute minute braid, you're gonna have one for Minute Maid and zeros for the other two. And if your brand is Tropicana, then the third dummy variable associated with Tropicana is gonna be one and the others gonna be zero. So that's that's how the dummy variables work. Okay. Now R is doing it slightly different. Instead of introducing three dummy variables, it actually introduces a new, uh, a new regression. Um, it picks the nominal brand so in R, things a little bit confusing, I think, um, but it is what it is. So it picks the nominal brand. And you actually can specify which brand you want to, to choose as nominal when you when you do the LM command. But let's say it's Dominic's, uh, actually, uh, yeah, it's Dominic's in this case. And uh, then it will say, okay, I'm gonna regress Dominic's to uh, minute made and uh, uh, Tropicana. So essentially the effect of the uh, Dominic's on the sales is going to be in this uh, beta zero. So when minute made and uh, Tropicana are zero, then beta zero, the intercept uh, becomes the effect of the Dominic, so this nominal brand. Okay, so instead of instead of introducing um, um, instead of introducing 
as I, as I showed here, three dummy variables associated with each of the brands. You pick a nominal brand, then you have, again, you, you will still have three additional variables, but now it's going to be intercept and then coefficients associated with two other uh, brands, which is non, uh, non nominal brands. And another thing that R will do, it will take uh, the intercept part associated with this brand and it will roll in into the overall intercept. So this beta zero now will introduce both the uh, previous uh, intercept plus the effect of the Dominix brand on the sale. So uh, effect of Dominix brand is added uh, to this uh, beta zero here, okay? And then we introduce uh, two dummy variables for one for minute mate, another one for Tropicana, and uh, two coefficients that corresponds to, to, the, to the, of those brands. Uh, okay, so in uh, R you actually don't really need to do anything. So in R, as long as this uh, brand uh, column in your uh, data set, in your table OJ, uh, has type factor, so this column has to have type factor. So each column in R uh, a data frame will have a type, uh, number or character uh, or sequence of characters, and another type is factor. Factor is basically says it's a discrete variable that takes. Um, a finite number of possible values and if you do this uh, if, as long as you specify the correct type for the for the and this read csv command usually does the right thing it, once it reads the data it will realize that some of the columns are actually factors and will convert them uh, properly uh, so you don't really have to do anything actually r will do all the work for you it will introduce the dummy variables and uh, you just have to uh, run this lm command and you see the output of it will be the intercept Again, this is a uh, combined effect of the original intercept of the model plus the um, effect of the Dominix. Uh, then you have your price elasticity and then you have additive effects associated with the Minute Mate and Tropicana. And again, those are effects uh, uh, in the correspondence to the Dominix effect. So this one, so the fact that this number is positive means that uh, Minute uh, Mate uh, has positive effect uh, in reference uh, to our nominal uh, brand, which is Dominix. Okay. And uh, Tropicana also has positive effect, meaning that the if if, if, if brand is minute made compared to the Dominix, then uh, people are more likely to buy. So your sales go up if your brand goes from Dominix to minute made, and it goes up even more if your brand is Tropicana when you compare it to the Dominix brand. So it looks like people do care about the brands and uh, the more expensive brands actually lead to uh, higher sales. Okay, again, so beta three and beta four here are the changes relative to the reference brand, which is Dominix in our case, okay? All right, so now another question you might ask, how brand affects price sensitivity? Are Tropicana buyers more price sensitive than Minute Maid's buyers? And we're just gonna add this interaction term, uh, price and the brand uh, into the model compared to the previous model when we didn't have this interaction. And let's look at the estimates. Uh, so intercept is, uh, should, should be very close because intercept stays, stays the same. Now the price sensitivity actually uh, looks like the price sensitivity. Uh, so here minus, uh, you remember we'll have to add this one, minus 3.37. And if your brand is minute made, you actually, uh, so for Minute Mate, a Minute Mate uh, price sensitivity goes from minus 3.37, and now we just have to 
uh, add this one to the price sensitivity, so it becomes 0 point, plus 0 0.57. So actually, price sensitivity uh, decreases. Uh, minute made customers are less price sensitive compared to the Dominix customers. And uh, for the Tropicana, the effect of the brand is even more pronounced. So for Tropicana brand, your price sensitivity goes from minus 3.37 uh, we just add the 0 0.67 to it. So again, the price sensitivity decreases, but it actually decreases by a larger amount compared to the mint made. So the less price sensitive customers are people who buy the uh, Tropicana brand. And again, you can look at the effect of the Tropicana brand. Those are the main effects. And uh, we already looked at the previous model that uh, minute meat customers and Tropicana customers lead to, uh, to larger sales. Okay. So, um, 